con chứ Ladies and gentlemen, we are very, very, we really apologize um, for the delay. Uh, we had a little uh, problem with the uh, signals here. Um, we really struggled and now uh, welcome. Sorry, ladies um, and gentlemen. Um, we are now going to start our game drive. The light is a little bit uh, low, but we are going to show you um, what we can find, um, like uh, the zebras and, and, the, and the animals that we can find in there. Uh, as we drive by. Sorry about the, the delay. Um, I will apologize once more. Sorry about the delay. But I want you to relax now um, because this evening I'm going to share as I always like uh, sharing the, the bush experience. So I'm going to drive a little bit and see uh, what we can find uh, on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a little, um, it's a little, you know, high grass here, so there could be some potholes. So if uh, apologize if the camera is going to be a little shaky uh, because of the potholes um, that I'm going to drive through. Uh, but I'm going to drive a little closer to these zebras. They tend, to, they tend to be a little shy. Some of them are chasing one another. Um, just a little bit about the zebra, um, especially when he's looking at you. Uh, all the stripes, um, the zebra look like an obvious animal to wild, uh, to predators. But when they are in a big group th like this, all the stripes uh, create um, an, an optical, um, they create an optical illusion. So the the, the cats uh, will not be able to single out one. So it's more like a, a very uh, safety techniques for the zebras, and especially when they are in a big. Uh, big Zebras is a combination of the young ones, uh, the males and the females. Um, they all form like a big group. Uh, they form a big group, but they are very much family oriented. So the zebras are very family oriented. Um, that one interesting thing about the zebra, um, if you look at they are very round shaped, look like very very healthy. But they look very healthy because of the bacteria they have in the stomach. Produces a gas. This gas, uh, this bacteria produces a gas and it making the zebra bloat. Like if you start chasing the zebra, they will really fat a lot because of the gas producing the sperm. One of them is just showing us. Uh, thing that, that is cool. That's very cool for the zebra. So the other thing you see, um, the zebra mane. Uh, if you see a zebra mane that is very erect, uh, that zebra mane is very healthy. Actually, one of the best way to know which uh, zebra is healthy. Um, if you see like a droopy uh, droop mane, uh, that zebra is not is not healthy. So that's the way we can tell which zebra is uh, looking better than the other. So we are going to drive through um, and see if we can find something else. As this is the right time for the cats, it's just a perfect temperature, so they'll be um, they'll be uh, working up and reading the menu. At the moment, uh, what we have in this vicinity is the zebras, and there is one antelope there. Uh, just going to drive a little closer so that we can see the clear vision of a uh, topi. Topi have very good um, eyesight. Uh, the zebra have uh, very they all um, tend to have, uh, uh, they all uh, tend to understand each other warning language. So we are going to drive um, over the ridge and see if we can see something else uh, just behind uh, over the ridge there. Oh, sorry, Zebra, I didn't mean to spook you. And at the background there, you can see beautiful cloud. It's a little shower, there's a little rain uh, uh, that's raining. That's kind of the rain called a barge. If it rain and it looks like it's not touching the ground, that rain is called a barge. It's very common here in the Mara, especially now we are going towards the end of the rainy season. So I'm going to drive through this long grass. Still a little challenge looking around, see if there is like a, um, a water of or town. 
time they could be some little animals like you no know, baby gazelles. Uh, so I have to be very very careful driving through this. What what you see um, uh, the far distance here is all the conservancy. This is a um, uh, southeastern of uh, the conservancy, very close to Olare Motorogi uh, airstrip, which is about 25 minutes uh, drive from uh, Mali to You can hear the birds, uh, those are the little uh, um, the last minute of the evening before they set back uh, to their nest. So going through here, uh, there's uh, like little tamarind, that's why I'm making like a little fish tail drive and driving around the tamarind, lucky that I've seen the little top head of the tamarind. Four beautiful birds are flying away from the car. Well, uh, I know yesterday we've been flown with uh, yeah. the last three days when you are driving around. Did you manage to see one of the cheetahs? Uh, well, uh, we haven't really been lucky to see any of the cheetahs yet, but uh, we hope probably the, you know the next few days we'll be able to see them. As now we are back live on safari, and. Uh, we get enough time to check the various areas that we think they might be. So, um, we are back to a little bit of uh, another group of zebras. Um, one toki, they seem to be a little more amatia. Sorry guys, it's a little... It's uh, African massage. It's called an African massage, you're right, Duncan. <laughs> So we are going to drive through and see some of them are looking up. Um, there is one to be kind of looking straight up. There are probably some predators here, so I'm going to stop a little bit and scan and see if we can spot some good stuff. Um, we are going to drive around, um, we are going to carry on driving and probably drive close to those bushes because this is the time uh, we might, it's more likely to, for the cats will be walking around. Thanks guys from Ulusaba, we're live on safari, Vanessa we see you. Welcome to the Mara, welcome to Olare Motorogi Conservancy. It's so, a live game from Olare Motorogi. Yeah, we have a little uh, cat here, but I'm not sure whether you are able to see that. Uh, that's a jackal and it's really running away from the top. The top is kind of trotting towards it and he thought uh, maybe to give uh, this big animal away. 
so it's kind of like running away uh, from us. Uh, that's a, sorry guys, that's a silverback jackal. That's kind of like it looks quite very shy. Yeah, trotting away, or this I can see like a big group of impala. As I said earlier, this is the time, uh, the best time for them to hunt. So probably it's starting to go and read the menu. Let's get a little closer to the impala. Probably may see some action. Thank you, Chooks. We're live on the plains. Sorry for the delay. We had a bit of uh, technical issues with the network. But here we are. Live at Tolari Motorogi Conservancy. Beautiful plains. Very dramatic clouds. Fantastic for photography. The big head of zebra here, they are all looking a lot now. Probably because of us, or maybe there's a, a predator somewhere out. I'm heading, I'm still heading back to the big uh, group of Impala I saw, that's where the, the jackal head. Um, so probably we're going to see some action in Navano. Nature is very unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen in, in the next minute. It's a beautiful tree. Um, this is called Osia tree. Um, it's one of the trees that the Maasai use. Um, various uses. Um, when the cow like give birth and maybe the placenta didn't come out, they can the mother will take out the back uh, High five, Valerie. And, and then they give the cow. And it works uh, immensely. You know, it works when once the straight they give the cow, the, the, the cow will just drop the placenta. gazelle have that side stripe and um, that side stripe actually help in, in nature um, like when the predators look at the Thompson gazelle the side stripe kind of uh, break the body line and then distract the animals um, uh, vision so the lions might see or leopard or cheetah might see it and not see like the whole animal and you now that will stop them uh, going after them and one day of survival. Uh, excuse me, John. Someone is asking, why are you driving off road uh, in the park? Uh, this is a conservancy where uh, game drive. Uh, we can allow uh, off road uh, because we have control uh, driving. Um, so we are only allow like five uh, five vehicles in uh, in, uh, in a sighting. But now that uh, the all other camps are closed. Um, it's allowed to just drive to see the animals, um, um, and especially with this long grass. But during the day, like when it's rain, we always uh, encourage people to drive um, on the road. But right now, when it's very, um, very dry, we, we are allowed to just uh, drive off road and see the animals and, and go back to the Beautiful. road when you are. So, John, uh, don't you think this is a big advantage uh, as opposed to the national park where you are only allowed to drive on the road it is a very big advantage actually um, and you, you can get a little bit close to the sighting so it's one of the best advantages of 
uh, why actually people prefer the conservative. So this is where you get the perfect shot. This is where you get the perfect shot, exactly. The money shot, okay. Yeah. So we are going to drive a little bit closer to another group of uh, uh, animals called impala. So we are going to drive a little bit past this um, itchy zebra who was just scratching in himself uh, on those, those two little treats. Must have been and having a massage. Yeah. Because of the you know, scratching, probably he left some little ticks there, and you can see a rupon uh, long tail selling. He probably going after the ticks that the, it came off uh, of the uh, of the zebra. So the, uh, it's uh, also happening like this. The zebra. Thank you, the Olo Saba team. The long tail, the rupon long tail selling is um, is following also the the zebras. Because as they move, they spook the little grasshoppers and then he get uh, some food. So I'm going to drive a little bit closer to the impala. I'm not sure whether the light is still perfect. How is the, the light, uh, Duncan? It's gorgeous. Wow, that's, that's how this is the golden, golden light. This is the golden hour. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, sorry for the delay. Um, we have had some signal uh, problem. But happy, relax, and enjoy. Next time, um, or next week, we are uh, having some better equipment, and we hope that it's going to be a little much better than what we have today. Or oh, to our left uh, is an animal called a cock heart beast. It's one of the species we I call them long nose animal. Um, they uh, they like being solitary. Uh, often you see some little group, but um, they like being solitary. They are called a heart beast because the horns form like the shape, the shape of the heart, and that's why they are called a heart beast. In Swahili, it's called Kongoni, which is a nice name. Like um, one of people like it. Kongoni and the Topi, which is just behind it, um, is almost the same species. Um, they also belong to uh, the same um, uh, group of antelopes, like the, the, uh, the like the, the wildebeest and impala. They are all antelopes. I'm going to get a little closer to the impala. I don't see the, uh, the, the jackal that came running this direction. Uh, but what I can see here uh, is interesting because there is two groups of Impala, the one to the left um, boys, uh, the males, and the one to our uh, right is the harem. So there's one male with all those women, so he's going to mate with all the women, and that's, um, it's called the harem. The impala, uh, the male impala, if you see, see him uh, having uh, the males uh, close by, it means that he's still very, very strong. So he's ready to face all the, all the other males. And in impala is a very interesting animal. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the impala. Uh, the impala have, especially now when it's facing away, I'm not sure whether you can see the, uh, Duncan, can you zoom it a little bit so that we can see the impala uh, back legs? Uh, back legs, um, sorry if it's if not very visible. The impala have a gland called a metatarsal gland. This metatarsal gland, uh, when the impala gets spooked, because obviously lion and theater would spook them, they all going to run in different direction. And if they do different direction, um, they as they run, they run and jump, and they pro uh, they produce the 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 metatarsal gland produces a substance on the ground, which later on in they regroup back again and come back together. And this male is not going to last long because all the time he's just looking around, uh, taking care of his girls. So he's spending less time um, uh, grazing. So Duncan, do you have something to add on an impala? He's, I know he's one of your favorite animals. <laughs> yeah, impalas are just so great. I think uh, this is the month of May. And uh, May is uh, the rutting season. Three, three weeks in May is the rutting season. So it's very cool to see the interaction between males chasing each other across the plains 
perhaps it's getting you know close to the night time everybody's looking like finding a place to settle down and looking around to make sure because cats are getting active now and uh, definitely that big boy is chasing the the bachelor head away from the girls but uh, earlier on i think you might have seen one girl jumping you know playing like showing off sometimes they run away from you know the harem just you know to sort of uh, play hard to get and the male will go running and bringing her back to the group probably they do that on purpose to try and attract the attention of the bachelors so they can probably fight and get the strongest male so they can mate with her that is cool good so right now we are going to drive uh, a little bit close to the bushes to see if we can see the the, the predators this is the perfect time um, to be walking around Just a little bit about the uh, uh, conserva uh, conservancy. Um, this is Olave Motoroki Conservancy. It's one of the seven, uh, one of the nine conservancy we have at the moment in the Mara. Um, people who came up uh, with their conservancy is uh, actually clever enough uh, because the way to retain the land to the Maasai is by having a conservancy. The Maasai have been coexisting with people since for the last like 200 years. And before that, they were like lion hunting, people were like chasing animals. And that now, the since the conservancy came into being, people now like the conservancy. Uh, because they, they, they've known now the animals have value to them. Uh, they, they, they work very well with them because we have controlled grazing. So it's not like they have been given uh, out their land for, uh, for, for game riding, but they still uh, graze around their land. And this land, eventually their sons will inherit, their daughters will inherit. Not like other places where they are losing land um, to, to other people because of not uh, being a, a conservancy. So we are going to drive uh, through these little bushes, looking around. Uh, this is one of the very good uh, lion uh, territory. They like lying down in this little, little bush. This is a crouton dicocamus for the orange leaf crouton. Uh, lions like uh, lying down in this one. Look like we don't see any tail. Um, so we're just going to drive around and see if we can find. There's some little funny smell around here. Probably there was a, like a buffalo around here. You can smell something like uh, buffalo urine. Because being in the bush for a long year, you, you can start uh, knowing the smell of animals. Like when you are walking around, you can smell giraffe. Um, you can smell um, uh, elephants, especially the elephant poo. Um, so sometimes you can tell where the animals is by just a smell you can have it around the bushes. Oh yeah, John, someone says, so glad to hear that uh, Impala's play hard to get. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. Duncan, um, maybe you can speak a little bit about this uh, beautiful tree here. Well, this is one of the most uh, interesting trees that uh, we normally see, you know, people normally enjoy uh, knowing in the Mara. This particular tree is one of the very many species of acacia trees in Maasai Mara. And uh, this one is called, this one is called the, the Whistling Thorn Acacia. The Whistling Thorn Acacia has some galls in it and if you look closely you will see that uh, there's some galls inside these galls we have some insects that live in there called the cocktail ants 
that protect the tree against browsers. So for example, if a giraffe is coming around trying to nibble on the little leaves, when the giraffe shakes a tree, the ants will come out in large numbers to protect the tree from the, from the giraffes. As you can see, there's some bit of ants moving out already with their tails cocked up. That's why they got the name the cocktail ants. And then they will release a little bit of pheromone and send a message throughout the tree and they will come out in large numbers and hence the giraffes have to leave this tree and go to the next one. So it's called the whistling thorn acacia or the Latin name is called Acacia drepanalobium and it's one of the most common trees that you see on the African savanna, especially at Olare Motorogi Conservancy close to the airstrip. So it's called the whistling thorn acacia and uh, these little girls, when they are still, uh, you know, fresh and soft, we eat them. We used to eat them when we were little boys. We think it's an immune system, you know, booster. We, we just like eating natural stuff as boys. Boys would like to test everything. So this ones, when they're still very soft, we, we, we do, we do enjoy eating them while looking after the goats, uh, you know, some years back. Such a beautiful tree and uh, you know these spikes are modified stipules that are meant to protect the tree from browsers. Beautiful tree. How about that John? Very good. Um, sometimes we, if we find that uh, a dead one um, and because sometimes they die we can uh, uproot it and take it uh, back home and make uh, use it like a Christmas tree. The girl we paint different colors and make like a beautiful natural Christmas tree. Wow. Beautiful. So we are going to keep on driving and um, still want us to go a little bit closer to, um, to the bushes. Uh, but, but we are also um, worried about uh, uh, signal. So we probably might not go really deep into the uh, into the lagers. So we just drive around to, uh, um, around these uh, little trees and see because this is also a very good um, lion or leopard country. Beautiful. So there will be a lot of ALTs, animal looking things. So um, sometimes we see uh, logs like that one, rocks like those one that, that look like animals. Yeah, so John, there's a question here. Yeah. Uh, someone is asking, have you seen Tito and her and her cub recently? No, um, it's about a month ago when, um, it's about a month ago since, uh, I was not particularly me, but Jackson, one of our guides saw it. Uh, very close by camp, so it's she's somewhere around here. She might be below the spa. Yeah, or <laughs> in the spa. <laughs> so this is typical lion country. Um, just going to drive along because they'll be coming out if they are in the bushes this is a perfect time for them to come out and see if they can see any uh, predator they grow from. It's very interesting, this is also the time the little uh, animals are coming out and it's almost a time for the not to get, uh, be active. Uh, things like hair, they'll be coming out uh, to feed. It is also the time that the day, the day animals will be settling down, birds are going back to the nest. Um, the crickets are also uh, almost starting. 
frogs are almost touching. So I'm going to drive a little uh, uh, closer to those bushes. So how are we signalized? Beautiful. Okay. Incredible. At the moment, uh, because of the long rain, um, the, the trees have had some foliage. So even looking uh, through the tree, uh, bush like this, it's like a canopy. So sometimes when an animal is in there, it's very, very difficult to see unless it pop out. Anybody home? Someone is saying we have a lovely country. It's absolutely yeah, I agree with heaven you. on I a stick. <laughs> this is second to none. This is paradise. Duncan, uh, which tree is this? And why is the leaves look like very round. Wow. Thanks, John. This one is called uh, the African Wild Gardenia. And it's a favorite tree for the giraffes. The reason why you see the, you know, the little leaves are tucked in is that giraffes have been here several times. They've been nibbling on it. And uh, hence, they look like someone was, you know, kind of pruning it. So it's called the African Wild Gardenia. And they, you know, during the flowering season, they had got some white flowers. And uh, they get some, you know, round fruits that uh, the Maasai people use as a medication. You know, if someone has a stomach upset, they, they, they boil the concussion and then um, you drink it to induce vomiting. So it's called the African wild gardenia. Beautiful tree. Uh, it's also a very good shed, you know, for herbivores. And sometimes out in the middle of the plain, just a little tree like this, a leopard could just be the trunk there. You know, it, there's some mud on it. Maybe buffaloes were here, elephants were here too. They were having a little bit of a massage on it, rubbing off ticks. That's why you see it has a bit of mud all around and looking nice and smooth. Beautiful. Yeah, just going to carry on around this tree and see if something is hiding behind. up to read the menu. I call them baby killers because often you see them uh, chasing baby impala, baby gazelle, baby dick dicks. Beautiful. It's a beautiful sunset tonight. Yeah. Very dramatic clouds. Lovely. Ladies and 
Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I apologize for the delay. Uh, sorry about the delay. Next time we are going to improve on that, especially in the next episode, uh, next episode when you have the right equipment. I hope you enjoyed um, uh, the, the, little, uh, the little short ride. So welcome to the online Motorology Consultancy. Yeah, and look forward to see you again on Wednesday for next live uh, game drive from Olari Motorogi. And uh, thank you very much for enjoying this live game drive from the Mara. And thank you stay for the patience. Yeah, stay home and keep safe. Thank you. Ciao. It's a beautiful country. What a sunset. everyone thank you ciao bye have a good night thanks everyone dramatic clouds of the morrow